and I uh, hope you are awesome on this Wednesday morning. Just going to give a moment or so as we jump on. Just have a fresh word for you or just something that I felt the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me uh, about this morning that's going to help you, encourage you, get you strengthened, get you back into the Word of the Lord, back into the purpose, back into the design, back into what God uh, wants for you uh, this day. So as you guys are climbing on, Let's take a moment, get everybody on, and uh, good morning, good morning. It is Wednesday morning. God wants to do amazing stuff um, in our lives, and I'm um, just excited to be with you in this moment. So I want to share with you guys this morning a just a prophetic word um, that's going to help many of you um, that the Lord spoke to me about. And as we as we climb on this morning, good morning again. Uh, let me just see some of the guys that are up. How's it, guys? Morning, morning, morning. And uh, how's it, Lisa? I see Kerry on. I see Belinda. And um, guys, I'm going to take just a, a moment quickly and uh, wait for just some of the other guys to jump on with us. But as we climb on this morning, um, good morning. I hope you had an awesome evening. Uh, we had a fantastic night just with EBI. Uh, the Lord just touched people again. You know, it's one of the greatest things to see people being empowered uh, by the Word of the Lord and by the Spirit of God. May I just say this morning as we start um, that we don't need anything more than the Word of God and the Spirit of God and the fellowship of the believers. Uh, it's the three things we need. And I'll say it again. We only need the Word of the Lord. We need the Spirit of God and we need the fellowship of believers. God uh, wants to do it simply by his spirit that's why the bible says it's not by might nor by power but by the spirit of the lord zechariah 4 verse number 6 so as you guys are are busy climbing on and uh, do me a favor as you quickly jump on guys is uh share the stream get it out to other people also and uh, tag somebody in it and again i say what i want to do is i want to share just a a uh, piece of scripture that I felt the Lord just spoke to me about this morning, um, even late last night. You know, sometimes when you go to bed, the scripture is like inside of you and you know that God wants to just do something. And so um, these quick sessions that I do are designed. Um, it's a now word from God just for you and uh, for me and for the people of God. So um, again, I say, I pray that EBI was last night was glorious and was amazing for you guys that did it. If you didn't do it, then, um, well, you missed out big time. And so, um, well, maybe as I'm going into this this morning, I uh, just also want to share and just want to say that our um, How Marriage Work course is coming this weekend. So don't miss that. Don't miss the, the marriage course. Uh, revival looks like family. Revival looks like family and so as i get into the word let me jump into the scriptures this morning very quickly and uh and again guys take a moment share get your get your friends on get the people on um that everybody can jump onto this it is just a now word and just something that i felt the spirit of god speaking to me and i want to pray this and i want to speak it out and i want to declare it out over your life now, before we get into the scripture this morning, the first thing I want us to note is very simply this, that the Bible says that the word of the Lord is a double-edged sword. And again, God is not a man that he can lie. So what the Lord says, what the Bible says, when God speaks over your life, it is not an empty promise. It's not a void. Uh, God is not a man that he can lie. Um, and secondly, we have to understand that when God speaks out of our lives, uh, what's very important is when the Lord speaks over you, He wants you to hear it. And then as soon as you've heard the word of the Lord, He wants you to say the word of God. Now, where do you find that scripture? You find it in Hebrews 4.12, where the Bible says very simply that the word of the Lord is a double-edged sword. That word double-edged is the word for two mouths or distomos, which means two mouths. And so we have to say what He says. And in simple, before I get into this, I just wanted to lay that foundation is that it's important for us to understand that we have to say what he says. We have to declare what he's declaring. We have to have the thoughts that he's having about us. Amen. So in John chapter number 11, listen to this. You find the story about, uh, you find the story about Lazarus. 
Um, and Lazarus is in a situation where he's, he's ill, he's sick. Um, and Mary and Martha is sending a message. They're sending a, a word to Jesus. They need to get Jesus onto the scene. Uh, they don't want their brother to die. They don't want the situation to be dead. Um, and so they send him a word. Um, and Jesus responds. Uh, listen to what they actually say to him. It's, a, it's quite powerful if you just understand what they what they're saying, they say, Therefore the sister sent to him, saying, Lord, behold the one you love is sick. Listen to Jesus' words. You better love Jesus for how he responds sometimes. He says this, When Jesus heard that, it's John 11, verse number 4, He said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Then all the way to John chapter number 11 and verse number 17. Listen to this. So when Jesus came, he found that he had already been dead in the tomb for four days. So Jesus came, he found that he had already been dead in the tomb for four days. And as I, as I, as the Lord gave me this again, you know, I've spoken about this before, but I want to say this. Yeah, you find almost like a contradiction. You find Jesus saying, uh, the sickness is not unto death, death, but for the glory of God. And so if you were a messenger, if you were somebody that would have received that message from the Lord saying, the sickness is not unto death, the situation is not unto death, Lazarus is going to be okay, then one day, two days, three days, four days, dead. Um, then it almost seems like the word of the Lord has failed. It almost seems like, it's, it's a con it seems like a contradiction, but it's, but it's really not. It's Jesus planning or setting something up here. And then the first day goes by, the second day goes by, the third day goes by, nothing happens. And basically the fourth day, when it seems impossible, Jesus eventually shows up. And I want you to understand there is this great power in what I'm sharing with you uh, this morning. Because in Jewish culture, and this is so strong, in Jewish culture, we have to understand day number one, day number two, day number three, it would have seemed possible still by man. In other words, man could still help out. And in the Jewish mind and in the Jewish thoughts and in the Jewish mindset, day number one, day number two, day number three, man could still do this. Uh, man could still raise this. Man can still change this. Man strength can still do this. But when you get to day number four and the thing seems to be impossible and you find yourself in a God situation, then it's only the Lord that can do it. And that's exactly what is happening here in, in the scripture. The Bible says, so when Jesus came, he found that he had already been dead in the tomb for four days. And this is what I believe the Lord is saying to you. You might find yourself in a situation or in situations in life where you will, it seems like the Lord has given you a word. It seems that you're standing upon a word. Uh, and you might have even declared the word of the Lord. You might have even put your heart to that. You might have even put many things to that. But I'm yet to tell you this, yet to tell you this morning uh, that the sickness is not unto death or the situation is not unto death, but for the glory of God. And that there is a moment coming now where the Lord has set you up for exactly for the script, what the scripture says. So when Jesus came, he found that he'd been dead in the tomb for four days. And then the Bible goes on and it, it simply says that Jesus, of course, raises Lazarus. And there's truth in this and I want you to um, just to get that this morning as well. But I, I want us to understand the power of this, that it is the situation is not dead. The area is not dead um, because this is the truth that happened here. When Jesus said the situation is not unto death, but for the glory of God, long before Lazarus's body would have ever hit that tomb, the word of the Lord was already inside the tomb. Let me say that again. Long before Lazarus was in the tomb, the word of the Lord was already inside the tomb. How do we know that? Because uh, Jesus said, the sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God. So long before Lazarus came into the tomb, the word of the Lord was ahead of Lazarus. And so when they sealed Lazarus up, and when that stone sealed him up, the word of God or the breath of God was already on the inside. The word of God was sent before Lazarus would ever hit that situation. And so I want to declare that over your lives this morning that you catch that. That there's no situation that you will ever face in your life. There's no place that you'll get to in your life where the word of the Lord is not going ahead of you. That is why we have to believe in the power of the Holy Spirit 
that is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And as I said last night in EBI, He is in the future. So the situations that we come into, God has been there already. And so now you find Jesus coming onto the scene, very powerful. Jesus comes onto the scene and Lazarus is on the inside, but there's something else that is on the inside, the Word of God. The Word of Jesus is already on the inside. In actual fact, if you study the Scripture in depth, what you'll find is that the Spirit of the Lord is already on the inside. Jesus has already obtained two witnesses and everything on earth is, is basically done by two witnesses where two or more agree. Jesus on the outside, Lazarus on the inside, and Jesus is getting ready to get Lazarus out of the tomb. And then I want you to see something. Jesus doesn't call on a multitude of names. Jesus just calls on Lazarus. He says, Lazarus, come forth. And then he does something powerful. He says to the people that put Lazarus into that tomb, he says, roll the stone away. And then when they roll the stone away, the Bible says, Lazarus comes out and then Jesus gives his instruction. He says, uh, take the grave clothes off him. And so here's the application this morning. The very, the very things that often puts you inside of the situation or gets you into the situation, Jesus uses those very things as a method to get you out of that situation. And secondly, often the things that bind you is the very things that Jesus will take to loosen you. And so if you understand that, there's another scripture that comes into, into, uh, into play that is extremely powerful and extremely valuable for us uh, to understand. Very simple. Um, is that the Bible says Jesus makes a table for us in the midst of our enemies. In the midst, He anoints your head with oil. Your cup overflows in the presence of your enemies. So I want you to see that the enemies that are present in your life is there for the reckoning. Let me say that again. The enemies that is present in your life is there for the reckoning. So the prophetic word for us today is very, very simple. Or the word that I want to get across this morning, and then I'm going to pray for you guys that you will see this in your own life, that you will get this, that you'll snatch this, that you will understand there's resurrection power. There's resurrection power in my situation. There's resurrection power in my circumstance. There's resurrection power in my life. There's resurrection power, and it might seem late, but it's not denied. It is waiting. And I want to say that I want to declare that with you this morning, uh, that you catch that and that you snatch that for yourself. It might have been day number four, and I often want to say this, it might seem overlooked, but it's not. Uh, David might have felt like that way. But he might have felt overlooked. He didn't even get invited to the party, man. but God selected him. And so I want to say to you this morning, that Jesus is standing on the outside. He's already sent his word in front of him. The word of the Lord is in front of your situation. The word of the Lord is in front of you. And what I want to do this morning, I want to agree with you this morning, that as we pray, that we would see the resurrection of whatever situation, whatever circumstance, but that you will know uh, exactly as Martha and Mary knew. Listen again to what they say. It's ridiculous. Listen, again, you have to understand that they're finding themselves in a serious situation. Yet, yet, they write to Jesus in a very peculiar way. They say to Him, Lord, the one you love is sick. Lord, the one you love is sick. And I want you to understand, here is great power in this understanding. These people are not writing to Jesus based on the goodness of themselves. They're not writing to Jesus based on the goodness of what they've done. Um, they're not writing to Jesus based on those credentials. They are writing to Jesus based on the credentials of how much Jesus is in love with them. So it's a switched understanding. I want you to understand that. Often we think it's what we have done. No, 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 no. It's what He has done. And more than that, it's not they, they understand that the greatest appeal that they can make to Jesus is Jesus, the one you love. Not the one that loves you, the one you love. Not the one that's done this and that. No, the one you love. And so I want you to understand that this morning and you to get into that. Amen. And so as you guys are on, what I want us to do this morning, very, very simple, is I... I think you catch the, the heart of what I've been saying right now. And all I want to do this morning with you is I want to declare the word of the Lord over your life. And I want to speak it out over you. And you and I can agree together this morning that it's might have it might be day number four. 
uh, but it's not a dead situation guys you have to study this these things that i've just said um you know there's so much truth in this and what i want to again i say what i want to get into our spirits this morning is that our lives cannot be based on the circumstances that are finding around us because sometimes jesus will make you wait until that moment for him to do the greater i want you to get that sometimes the waiting is the greater oh come on let's just get an amen for that sometimes the waiting is the greater and i know sometimes as believers we don't like to wait but he that waits upon the lord he that waits upon the lord shall be refreshed shall be renewed are you there so let's do the following this morning i want to speak this out of your life i want to get this into the atmosphere for you um and the grace and the mercy and the love of god is massive it is huge we must not not think or believe anything else so guys i want you to understand this i want you to uh bring this to your own remembrance and i want you to know it's day number four but it's the resurrection day and that is what i want to speak out of your lives this morning it might be day number four but it's still resurrection day can you say that with over your life it's day number four but it's resurrection day it's day number four but it's a day of power it's day number four but god is doing something it's day number four but god is working behind the scenes it's day number four but that that is unseen is being worked on it's gonna be manifested and it's gonna be today come on guys when do you want it faith is now right so just want you to grab a hold of this this morning grab hold of this word for yourself um and let's pray let's speak that out over your life this morning uh let's grab hold of it you know as i shared again last night with ebi there's so much power that is available in the holy spirit and we have to make sure that we align ourselves with god's word uh with what god is saying not what some is saying not what the situation is saying because truth be told everything will ha want to have a voice in your life however it is the lord the voice that needs to be counted so guys quickly take a moment i want to declare first and foremost i want to i want to spray i want to uh, declare the word and i want to speak out over families families first so let's go for families um and i uh, want to pray over families this morning um and just want to speak out this word over your families so if that's you first and foremost families let's go for that so if that's families uh, quickly take a moment and uh, let's comment our families we're going to do families first um and then i'm gonna then i'm gonna spray and we're gonna speak and we're gonna declare over and what i want you to do this morning i want to i want you to tag your families tag your families into it um because revival looks like family god wants to touch the families um if there's family situations that you've been praying for family situations that you've been trusting god for any family situations these are the things that i'm aiming for this morning so families so let's quickly give a moment i want you to tag that family member and then i'm just going to give you a specific thing as well as i feel led this morning by uh the spirit of god so guys quickly uh there is a couple of i'm going to give you just a second or two or three or four um let's go for families I see many families going guys just post your families go for it go for it go for it i see the smith family i see the menzies family i see the ferreira family uh i see the Mueller family uh, limbach and truta family come on let's just get the families on i see um the prince family aaron's family come on let's just let's just put the families out because revival looks like family okay as you guys are busy tagging those families let's pray together and as we pray together i want you to agree with me i want you to say amen there we are i want you to speak out of your family uh i see that i see david pinar i see vanessa ludic uh I see the family so let's pray for the families father thank you that right now uh as these family names are running out father i want to declare i want to speak out over each and every one of these families that father it might have been the fourth day it might have been a situation lord where it seems like a dead moment but father we want to speak out your word this morning uh, over all of these families that the hand of the lord will be upon these families father i i want to pray that they will understand 
uncommon favor is their portion in Jesus Christ's name. Father, we thank you that the stones of disappointment, the stones of restriction, the stones of limitation gets rolled away in this day. Father, I want to pray, Lord, I just see it. Even as I pray right now, Lord, it's almost like things have been stagnant for a moment. But Lord, I pray this morning, we agree by faith. We agree by faith, Lord, that things move and shift over families as revival looks like family. And Father, I pray that you'll touch from the, from the head of the men uh, all the way to the ladies, all the way to the children. Father, from the husbands to the wives to the children, that revival will hit the families, that things will come into place for families in Jesus' name. And so, Father, we declare the word of God this morning. We declare your word out over families this morning for a revival. But more than that, Lord, we put our mouth of your word this morning. And your word simply says, revival looks like family. More than that, Lord, it, the word declares, it might be the fourth day, uh, but this situation is not dead. It is for the glory of God. And I thank you, Lord, that we can pray this morning that every fa family, Lord, all these families' names that are being on uh, thrown up here, that every family, that it will move, these families will move into a place, Lord, where it will be for the glory of God, that it will move to the glory of the Lord. Father, I want to pray that your glory will settle in onto families. Father, we want to ask you that in this day, that people that are unsaved in our families will get saved. People that are uh, not born again, that they will be born again. People that are not knowing you, Lord, that they will know you in this day, in Jesus Christ's name. And so it shall be. Father, we thank you, according to John 11, that you hear us. Father, thank you that you hear me. Thank you that you hear us as we agree together. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen and amen. A second group of people that I quickly want to pray for is specifically people that have received a prophetic word, that have received words out over your life. Um, and you have been, you are finding yourself in a situation, or just people that have received prophetic words. And what I want to do is, the Bible says we need to bring to remembrance the word of the Lord. We need to bring to remembrance, remembrance those prophetic words. In other words, if you have a word out over your life, uh, we have to bring to remembrance those words to God. And so that's what I want to do is, I just want to bring that words to remembrance because here as i said there's a prophetic principle uh in the scripture for us jesus makes the declaration the sickness is not unto death but for the glory of god then basically day one day two day three day four seems everything to the contradiction but then day number four comes and jesus fulfills the word and so i feel that there's people here that you are in your day one you may be in your day two you may be in your day three but here's the truth Day number four is upon you. And I want to put my mouth with your mouth. And I want to bring to remembrance the word of God in it. So if that's you guys, quickly post and say, um, just throw up your name. And even if it's a family member's name, even if it's somebody else's name, uh, that you, a person that you know, a person that you love, a person that's under your care even, then I want to put just this word as remembered. Uh, Paul actually says it to Timothy. He says, fan into flame the gift that is inside of you. He says, bring, in other words, bring it to remembrance. Tell the Lord again. Um, so quickly comment that, guys. And I'm going to pray with you and uh, put my mouth with your mouth and agree with you this morning. So I see. Quickly, let's go for it, guys. I just want to give 10 seconds or so, uh, 15 seconds for you to do this. And just to put your names down and even put those people's names down and even tag them into it. I see Anshan uh, and Edwin. I see Lamy um, and uh, I see Ruan Fulyun. Okay, Ricardo. There you go, guys. I see D commenting. I see Althea. Okay. Just want to give a moment or so. This is important for us. Very important for me as well. Um, because we are firm believers in the Word of God. We are firm believers in what the Lord has said. See Marinas. Uh, come guys, quickly comment for it. You know, this is this is the power of agreeing by faith. The Toto, Toto and the Mogape family. Uh, Darren. 
just going to take a moment as I see the names running. Many people commenting and we want to give time for this. So Jane, Jane Mueller, then Eric, uh, Erika, uh, Rian, Rian, Marchant, Marcel, Tanya, uh, Coward, Sean, Coward, Amaray. Okay. I want this as, if you, first and foremost, if you have, I want to just teach you three things um, with this, just simple things. And then we're going to pray for every name that's running on. When the Lord gives a word, the first thing you need to do, write that word down. The second thing, if the Lord gave you a word, very simply, you have to put that word into the atmosphere. And thirdly, when you have received the word from the Lord, you have to get other people to pray with you. So there's simple rules in it. And, you know, maybe we'll make time another day just for this and speak about how to see a prophetic world come to fulfillment. Um, but this morning, I just want to agree with you um, in prayer, um, by faith, about the words that you have received from the Lord. And we want to bring it to remembrance again this morning. So um, let's go for it, guys. Let's pray together. There we are. Won't you just, uh, you can put up your hands. You can raise your hands, throw up an emoji for me that I just know you're agreeing with me. And let's pray together um, with two or more agree. So let's just pray together. Let's put, the, let's put breath to this and let's remind the Lord. So Father, I want to thank you right now, Lord, for every single person that have received a word from God. Father, I want to first and foremost thank you that your word cannot fail, Lord, and your word cannot return unto your void. And so, Father, we just want to speak it out over people's lives this morning, Lord, that these words cannot come to your void. They cannot fall to the ground and they shall not. I first want to say that, Lord, they shall not be unsuccessful. They will do exactly that that you have promised it to do. And Father, thank you that we can declare that out over people's lives this morning. Very, very simply, Lord, that the word of the Lord that has been spoken out over people's lives, Father, we bring to remembrance those words in this morning before you. And I thank you, Lord, that we will see the outcome of those words in Jesus Christ's name. And Father, I feel even as I pray right now for many of these words as well, it feels like the fourth day. But I want to thank you, Lord, that it can come to fruition now. It can be active now. And Father, I thank you for the season uh, that some of these words have gone through and the timing that is perfect in these words. And Father, we want to agree this morning simply together and we want to bring to remembrance these words to you in this day. And Father, we want to speak breath over these words. We want to speak life over these words. And we declare the word of the Lord. It shall come to pass in Jesus' name. Father, we want to silence any doubt. We want to silence any form of anxiety. We want to silence any form of fear. We want to silence any form, Lord, any form where the enemy has whispered anything contradictory to what you have promised over people's lives in Jesus' name. And this day, we declare it again, it shall come to pass in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. And Father, even now, even as I sit here, Father, I want to speak and I want to declare over people's lives, Lord, even as it just comes into my spirit, that the word will be hastened. That the word will be hastened, Lord. I just feel in my heart, guys, that um, the Lord wants to hasten the word. The time is going to be accelerated. There'll be a hastening of it. So, Father, I want to speak out right now as I feel impressed in my spirit, Lord, that the word will be hastened unto people, that it will happen quicker. Um, Lord, I pray, Lord, that the hastening of the word, the acceleration of the word shall be the portion of the recipients in Jesus Christ's name. And if you agree with that prayer, just say a massive, massive, massive amen. Come on, guys, just say amen to that. Lastly, what I want to do this morning, very simple, is I want to just bring you to remembrance everything that I said. I said to you as we start, the, when Jesus spoke the word, he said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God. Day one, day two, day three happens. It seems impossible. Day four, he arrives. He says, roll away the stone. He takes the stone. They roll away the stone. He says, uh, take the the, death, uh, the grave clothes, unwrap him and let him go. I want to say to you this day, as you go into this Power Wednesday, that the very things that is often there to place you into a situation is the very stepping stones that God will use to get you out of that situation. 
If you want to have a scripture for what I've just said, when the, when the stone got rolled away from the tomb of Jesus, the angel of the Lord sat upon it. So may God sit upon, may God sit upon the hindrance, may God sit upon the stone, may God sit upon the things that seemed like it locked you in. Amen. Come on, that's a yes, a yes word and a now word just for us. We have to receive this, guys. Uh, God is pleased when we give Him the substance of faith. Amen. So, guys, as we come to the end of our time just together, thank you for being with me this morning. Um, I enjoy just being with you quickly and giving you just the now word that you can apply in this day. So do us a favor, just share this and get it out to other people. Remember, again, I always say, uh, the word of the Lord is light, light unto my feet. Uh, the word of the Lord it says very clearly, my people perish for lack of knowledge. So get it out to people. Share, share, share. Guys, you must have a power Wednesday. Go and conquer it with the Holy Spirit as I shared last night. We can do nothing without the assistance to the assignment. But with the Holy Spirit, all things are possible. I love you guys. Bless you. Have a power, power, power Wednesday. Um, and looking forward to Sunday to be with you guys. So go into this day, conquer it. Love you guys very much. And just take a moment and share. Have an awesome time, guys. Love you. And goodbye.